الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين ومن التبم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد to proceed Today's lesson بإذن الله تعالى we will speak about a very important subject in Arabic grammar and it's very important because we encounter it all the time. In fact, you will have encountered it even before you realized that that's a particular or a special type of construct. And it's called Al Idafatu. Al Idafatu. al to it relates to connecting, as in a connection. And it's very important because in Arabic, one of the most common ways of describing ownership, like I own something or I possess something, is by using al to so, you will have encountered many times, for example, the phrase Kitabullahi Kitabullahi The Book of Allah And similarly, Rasulullahi The Messenger of Allah And Naqatullahi The She Camel of Allah you will have encountered that particular phrase many times and all of them relate to how Allah Azza wa Jalla is the owner of that particular thing such as Kitab Allahi relates to Al-Quran which is Kitab Book of Allah similarly Rasulullah the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam So that particular construct is something that you will have encountered all the time But today, inshallah, we are going to learn the grammar surrounding it and the reason why it's so important So to begin therefore What we're going to do, well we'll leave Kitab here We'll substitute Allah for Walla uh, Din. Right. So here we have two nouns, two Esmans. So what we understand therefore about Al Idafatu is that it comprises of two Isms or Ismani, two nouns. Right? Two normal nouns. Uh, the first noun, as you can see here, is Kitabu and the second noun is Waladin Kitabu means a book and Waladin means a boy, a boy. Yeah, Let's not start that <laughs> when there's no Al Right, so even before we begin to analyze al Idafatu. There's something about the ending of these two words or these two ismans that you should automatically recognize as being strange. Right? Zakhlaq. What is strange about the way that I've written kitab and walid regarding the ending? They're not in the normal state. Well, which one isn't in the normal state? Right, good. Waladin is not written waladun with two dhammas. Right? Muhammad? No. That's true, isn't it? We can see it's not. It's not marfu'un. And that should be something that instantly arouses our curiosity. Why? Right, Abdul Ahad? Because all along in the lessons that we've had, 
is that we have emphasized this point that ordinarily an Isman by itself with nothing, nothing acting upon it will be in which state? Marfu'un. <laughs> and the indicator for being marfu'un is what, Abdul Ahad? The two dhammas. Or the dhamma. Right? The dhamma is the indicator. That's one uh, aspect which is strange, but here, that's that has a dhamma, right? That has a dhamma tone, that's marfu'un. But what's strange about kitabu? It's written with uh, marfu'un. Right, Muhammad. It's supposed to be kitabun. Just as that is supposed to be waladun. But it's not, is it? I wrote it kitab. Bu, and I wrote that waladin. So either I've made a mistake, or it's supposed to be like that. And I didn't make a mistake, and it's supposed to be like that. So now that's strange, isn't it? We should be curious as to why it's like that. And the reason being, as I said, it's al idafatu It's a special construct in Arabic that connects two nouns together to form a meaning, usually of possession, such as kitabu waladin, kitabu waladin, which means the boy's book. Don't say the Muhammad. Don't, don't say the. A boy's book or a book of a boy. However you want to understand it, the point is it relates to waladin owning kitabun or kitabu in this instance, right? So What's special about al idafatu There are two rules relating to the first ismun and two rules relating to the second ismun. And it's very important that we remember these. But before we do that, the first ismun is called mudafun. Mudafun. Right? The second ismun is called Muhammad. Well, at least you remembered one. Mudafun ilayhi. Right. So what that means is the mudafun. It means connected. Mudafun ilayhi means connected to. Right? So it's like saying Kitabu is connected. Connected to what? It's connected to Mudafun Ilihi. Connected to this one. Right? So even that might seem a strange at the beginning, don't worry. Because you just need to always remember one example that you remember and then apply it to all the other instances where you encounter it. So here, Kitabu Waladin, a book of a boy, right? So what are the two rules that relate to the mudafun and what are the two rules that relate to mudafun ilayhi? Right? The first rule that relates to the mudafun is that it can be in all three states. Right? So kitabu can be in all three states. That's the first rule here. All three states. So, Abdul Ahad, when we say that the mudafun can be in all three states, what does that actually mean? Kitabun. No, no, no. Ki Kitabu, so it can be kitabu as it is. It can be kitabi with a kasra and it can be kitaba with a fatha. 
Right, so when we say it can be in all three states, what we mean it can be marfu'un with a dhamma. Right, because it's better to say it can be marfu'un rather than saying it can have a dhamma. It can be mansubun with a fatha. And it can be majroorun. Good, Abdullah, do you remember that one? It can be in all three states. Right? So why would I write, if, if it can be in all three states, akhlaq, why would I write it kitabu waladin? Why would I write it kitabu waladin in our example? No, no, you do know, think. There'd be a reason, wouldn't there, Arjan? Sorry? It's, it's not difficult. Why would I write it kitabu waladin? Nothing before. Right, because it would be in its default state. Right? Abdullah had that. That's still a normal ismun. Even though it's a special idafatun construct, it's still a normal two nouns. And a normal noun left by itself is always going to be marfu'un. <laughs> Right? Which is why I'm still going to write it Kitabu. Right? Now, why would it become Kitaba? If I'm going to write it Kitaba Waladin, then that now is not correct. I cannot write Kitaba Waladin on the board in this manner. Without what? We should now know without Fil. without a fi'lun, for example, before it. Right? Because ordinarily it would never be kitabu waladin. It would be kitabu waladin. Right? So if we're going to write kitabu waladin, then it must mean that what should come here, Muhammad? Kataba. Kataba, for example. Right? Kataba, kitaba waladin. So, what does kataba, kitaba waladin mean? He, he wrote a book. Boy wrote a book. In his book. No, no, no. Boy wrote no. in his book. <laughs> no, no, where's. No, no, no. Let's not make it up. What does kataba mean, Abdul Ahad? Red. He wrote. He wrote. He wrote. He wrote. So what type of sentence is this now? Jumla tul fi'liyatu. How do we know it's a jumla tul fi'liyatu? Because it starts with a fi'lun. What's the second part of al jumla tul fi'liyatu? Fa'ilun. Good. Where is our fa'ilun in this sentence? How do we recognize the fa'ilun akhlaq? We know this. It's always marfu'un, right? Akhlaq? We should have known that from our lesson on al jumla al fa'liyah and every lesson afterwards. The fa'ilun is marfu'un. It relates to the doer. So, Arjan, where in our sentence do we have a fa'ilun? The doer. Yeah. What are they? The boy. But we just said, we just said that the dua is always marfu'un. Is the waladin marfu'un? Yeah. No, no, it's a majroorun. We said the fa'ilun is always marfu'un. So again, Arajan, where is the dua? The, the middle word. Sir. But we said that the dua is always marfu'un. Is that marfu'un? No, no, we're not going to change it. We're not going to change it. First one, sorry. Yeah. Then we'd be in all sorts of trouble if we started changing that. First one, what he's saying, obviously, he's writing it. So he, he wrote. Yeah, that's the doer. Good. Remember, we said, we said, if the doer isn't explicitly there as a person, for example, then we assume that it's he. Kataba means he wrote. So who's the doer? He. He. Whoever he is, is irrelevant. The point is, he is the doer, right? Abdullah Ahad? Yeah. Remember that. 
Because we don't have a fa'ilun which is a marfu'un. Do we? If we did, and we're going to mention examples of why that happens. If we did, it wouldn't be an issue, but we don't. All we have is kataba kitaba waladin. So who's the doer? Well, the doer isn't there now. So what does it mean? Arajan, kataba kitaba waladin means? He wrote it in his book. Arjan. He wrote a book. Yeah, but now, now you're missing this. A boy. A boy. Yeah. No. So a boy wrote a book. No, no, no now, you, now you're making a boy the doer again. What does kitaba waladin mean? We mentioned this. What does it actually mean, kitaba waladin? A boy's book. So what, if we put kataba before it, what does it mean? He wrote a boy's book. Right. He wrote a boy's book. Not complicated, right? He wrote a boy's book. Right? Muhammad? See? But why did we do that? Why did we introduce a fi'lun? What, what are we trying to demonstrate here? That the mudafun, the first rule, is it can be in all three states. So we demonstrated it with kitabu. Now we're demonstrating it with kitaba waladin. Kataba. Kitaba waladin. Right? Clear? Yeah. Similarly, we could change kataba to he read. What is he read? Qara. Qara. Right? Qara. Qara'a kitaba waladin. What does that now mean, Rajal? No, no, you do know. You do know. He read uh, a boy's book. Right. He read a boy's book. Okay. And we can mention other examples. But the point is, is that the mudafun can be in all three states. Right? So what's the third state therefore, Ya Abdul Ahad? Kitabi. Right. And what's it called, that third state? Majroorun. Kitabi waladin. But Kitabi waladin, just like Kitaba waladin, written by itself, is incorrect. Why, Akhlaq? No, um, yeah, they Fail. Not Harfu jar. Why? It's there's no harfu jar in before kitab. Now it's as as we will learn. It's not only a harfu jar that can make an ismun majrurun. There are other types of words. But the point is, is that's what we've learned up, up, up to now. So, Abdul Ahad, give us an example of a harf ujarri. Allah. Allah. Right? Allah. So, what does Allah mean? Allah means? On. Allah kitabi waladin means? On the boy's book. Thank you, Muhammad. Allah kitabi waladin. On a boy's book. Arjan, another example of a harf ujar. Fi. Right? Fi. In a boy's book. In a boy's book. Okay? And we could mention others, but the point to note is that this is now majrurun. Right? Fi with fi. So we know that the mudafun can be in all three states. Right? That's the first rule to remember. So now what's wrong with this Arajan? What's wrong with kitabi waladin? Not much. There's no preposition. 
So what should it be? Marfu. It should be marfu'un. Why akhlaq? It should be back to its default state. That's a very long dhamma. Kitabu waladin. Why? Should be back to this. Arjun? Because it's now back to its default state. And the default state for an ismun is? Marfu'un. Right. So the second rule for the mudafun is something you've already observed. It's always going to be a single term. Good, Muhammad. It only ever takes one harakatun, meaning one vowel marking, not two. The mudafun only takes one haraka. So the mudafun only takes takes one vowel. Right? Which is significant because up to this point every ismun and it's a default state or any other state, if there's no al before it, is always with a tenuinum. Right? No. But here, it only takes one vowel. That's nice and easy, right? Yeah. So is that clear? Right? So, the two rules for the mudafun ilayhi. The two rules for the mudafun ilayhi. The first rule, which is the easy one, that you will also have noticed about the mudafun ilayhi. What state is the mudafun ilayhi always in? It's always. Majroor and good. Because remember, even when we changed that to Mansubun and we said Kataba Kitaba Waladin, it was still Majroorun. Waladin was still Majroorun, right? Arjan? And when we placed the Harfu Jarin before it and we said Fi or Ala Kitabi Waladin, that was still Waladin. Right? Which means that the mudafun ilayhi is always majroorun. Okay? So the mudafun ilayhi is uh, always majroorun. So that's the mudafun. And this is the mudafun ilayhi. Okay. So the mudafun ilayhi is always majroorun. That's nice and easy, isn't it? So the second rule for the mudafun ilayhi is. At the moment, what does Kitabu Waladin mean exactly? A boy's book. A boy's book. If we want to say the boy's book, to make it definite, we place the Al before the Mudafun Ilayhi. And it becomes Kitabul Wala. Now, what's wrong here, Muhammad? Uh, it can't be definite and indefinite. Right, so what? How do we correct it? You have to take one of the Majrurs. One of the Kasra. So it becomes Kitabul Waladi. Right? I assume, Muhammad, specifically because you always. We always say uh, the when it's a 
Alright? So that's now Kitabul Waladi. Kitabul Waladi. And the meaning has now become the boy's book. The boy's book. Right? The boy's book. And that's important. Because the Al always comes before the Mudafun Ilayhi, or only the Mudafun Ilayhi can be definite. Only can become definite with Al. Even though it makes both of them definite. Right? So the boy's book, the boy's book is the, the meaning now by introducing Al before Waladin. Kitabul Waladi. The boy's book. To go back to a boy's book, we say Akhlaq. Kitabu Waladin. Right? And similarly, if we introduced a Thetlun or a Harfu Jar, the meaning would still be the same. So if we said, if we wanted to say he read the boy's book, we would say. Qara'a Kitab al-Waladi Right, Qara'a Kitab al-Waladi Okay, if we wanted to say in the boy's book, we would say Fi Kitab al-Waladi Okay So That Rule uh, only the mudafun alayhi can become definite with al is the second rule relating to the mudafun ilayhi. So in general we have four rules that govern al idafatu. Okay?